we are projecting a fiction. It is cursive film featuring only art stars. But stars who change art as an institution. Here the artist's conversation is an art formation. Nonetheless, the content of the documentary film is a fiction. The first exhibition in uh, 69, which was in Leverkusen, Concept Art, the very first exhibition under this title, bringing something like 80, 90 people from more or less all around the Western world. And inside these people, you were having people who today, for everyone, will make no sense to put into conceptual art, for example, uh, Bob Ryman, who will sing to put Bob Ryman as a conceptual artist. Agnes Martin. But at that time, the people said, what is this blank uh, painting? What is that? Make no sense. Conceptual art. We have to go back to the uh, early 60s. And uh, of course, there's uh, the idea of minimalism was as a reaction to uh, abstract expressionism here and uh, it took different ways pop art was one and minimal was another the seed that uh, really engendered uh, pop art was the idea f uh, that came through uh, say Johnson Rauschenberg from uh, Duchamp and the main uh, ingredient was the idea of, of irony and the idea of irony came more or less through both Dada and surrealism and that was those were two things uh, two movements that were uh, completely uh, anathema to uh, those of us who came through uh, uh, minimalism for me conceptual art is anarchistic humor not not neo-academicism like Kasuth or art language good example would be Ed Ruscha Stanley Brown, on Kawara. The idea was uh, to make something that was, um, uh, at least in the very beginning with my magazine pages, something that was disposable and would destroy the idea of value. Also, it was uh, dumb, uh, seemed to make everything very dumb, but be very intelligent at the same time. It was a kind of, uh, um, a kind of deadpan humor. Saul Lewitt, who I showed with when I had a gallery, said his, uh, uh, his um, uh, wood lattice pieces were, uh, were to be um, uh, playgrounds for his cats. When I think about the idea of humor, uh, I don't uh, think about that word exactly. I mean, there's something that, that, that people call humor. I don't call my work humorous, but, but there is an element of that that it occurs when uh, something unexpected happens in in the art and and that can make for if you don't call it humor you might call it amusement and even the driest kind of conceptual art has has amusement and so people quickly say well that's humorous you know I, when I think of conceptual art and uh, and, and in its uh, purest form, I think, well, I always think of Lawrence Wiener, a friend of mine. He, he, well, he, did, this, he did this work called um, To Throw an Object from One Country to Another. And uh, so this had no, uh, he didn't make a painting of this, and he didn't, uh, I, I think it just exists in the air but it is, it's, it's his creation. When you consider that, you might say, well, in many ways, that's humorous. 
and in lots of ways it's amusing and in certain other ways it's unexpected uh, you know this is an unexpected thing to come along in what 5,000 years of making art for someone to say this is my art to throw an object from one country to another when you say conceptual art, no. The stuff I make is real. Turn off the lights in the old words of Ed Reinhardt, you can trip over it. It can fuck up your life. Uh, that's not very conceptual. <laughs> it's a material reality. So, no, I don't really, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, can't, I can't tell you where it fit in. They use it, I know what they mean, so why should I make a lot of time saying, but I'm not, I am, I'm not, no. If somebody wants to be a conceptual artist, more power to them. I'm really quite content being an artist. <laughs>